Betty. I've missed you, sweetheart. We're gonna have the best vacation ever. Where's mom? Well, I'm not sure. <clears throat> Hello. Sweetheart, I need you to remain calm, but your mother has been taken. Again? This is like the 10th or 11th time. I know, but it's, uh, what? I see. Please remember to remain calm, but your Aunt Lisa has also been taken. <gasps> and your grandma Beatrice has been taken. Your third cousin twice removed Sam has been taken. Your Scottish fold cat, Mr. Bumblepaws, has been taken. And your great uncle Jack has been taken. Wait, which great uncle Jack? The one on your side or the one on mom's side? I don't know. Which one? Or what does he look like? I'm gonna put you on speaker. Oh, I had speakerphone. Like I say, we take your family for revenge. Great Uncle Jack, he's the one with ear hair like Yoda, and he swears all the time. That's Uncle Jack on Mom's side. He doesn't like anybody who isn't American and white. I know. We give him iPad to pass time. He does nothing but forward racist Obama emails to our Hotmail accounts. Just don't give him any booze. You're really be in for one of his rants. Now you listen to me. You know who I am. You know what I can do. If you let my wife, Lisa, Beatrice, Sam, and Mr. Bumblepods go, that'll be the end of it. But if you don't, I'll come looking for you. I will find you, and I will kill you. What about the racist Uncle Jack? I'm thinking. I'm on the fence about this, lads. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Film Pigs on Geek Nation, or as uh, this episode could be called, Two Jerks and a Lady. <laughs> Who's the lady? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> hey, that's, you know, I call it as I see it, Tom. Uh, I'm your host, Steve Skelton. I am here with television's Todd Robert Anderson. Hello! And with uh, filling in for our missing pig in the city, Stephen Falk, is our good friend, Alexandre Antoine. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello, Dre. Wait a second. Yeah. I feel light. My hand are light. They're light? Yeah, they, I, I feel like I need... Oh, I've almost forgotten. We gotta get some popcorn. Oh, that's what it is. Mm, I'll get I almost, I almost ruined everything. A popcorn for the lady. Ah. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Mm. And a popcorn for a couple of jerks. Uh, jerky popcorn. Go. Jerk Excellent. popcorn. Mm. 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 Oh, Let's do good. cheers. Mm. Cheers. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Ah. Mm. Now, rash judgments. Mm. Now this is a segment where the film pigs, you know, we're regular folk. We don't get to see pre-screenings. We don't get invited to things. So <laughs> anything. Yeah, we, we, we anything. have no choice uh, but to wait like everybody else to see the upcoming movies. Wait for those opening nights. But until then, we take a look at trailers and previews and junk on the internet and just make our own opinions about uh, what we think the movie's going to be. Is it going to be any good? Going to be bad? Whatever. Yeah. So uh, let's check out some rash judgments. Todd, you got one for us, don't you? Uh, yeah. Uh, my rash judgment uh, this episode of The Film Pigs is for a movie called uh, Nobody Walks, and it stars uh, John Krasinski's... Uh, John Krasinski. Krasinski. I think it's Krasinski. <laughs> that guy from The Office. He's yeah. charming. John Krasinski's wife is uh, trying to finish up a movie that she's been working on, and she has her hot friend from the city come out to their house to help her finish it. And uh, she's really hot, and John Krasinski, you know, who can resist a hot chick, even if you're married, and she comes to your house to help you finish a movie? There's, of course, nothing more dramatic than uh, movie post-production, so yeah. it could be exciting. Oh. I, myself, um, just got um, the Indiana Jones box set on Blu-ray, so I'm probably just going to stay home and watch those movies. Not the fourth one. The fourth one, I'm, I'm going to melt the plastic down and form it into a hard ball, and then I'm going to drive out to the Skywalker Ranch and huck it at a security guard. 
Well, all right. Thank you, Todd. For your... for forget about it. Yeah, it was my pleasure. I hope it was judgment. helpful on some level. It was fantastically helpful. Well, now, Dre, yes. you've got a rash judgment for us as well, don't you? Yes, I do. Let's have it. Uh, Paranormal Activity 4, and I must admit, I have not seen any of the paranormal movies at all, but... I, for one, I like scary movies. I like this kind of stuff. And anybody who has a movie with a little kid in there, uh, I always scream. So I. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. It really yeah. is too yeah. scary. Yeah. Yeah. Really well, actually, about anything, but let's just be honest. <laughs> but when I saw the little trailer with the kid in the room, and I, it's freaking me out. So I may go see it. I think it's probably going to be interesting. And I'm saying if you've already seen one, two, and three, you might as well go see four. That's how I'm looking at it. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's just so apathetic. Well, I'm yeah. just saying, might as well. <laughs> well, it's like Lost. You already saw the first yeah, three seasons. You might as well finish it. Finish yeah, it out. Finish it out. Through to get to the disappointing ending. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you were there. You saw you it through. Saw it. So you... I would go see it. It looks interesting to me. I want to see the little kid scare the crap out of these people. I would go see it if it had cops played by Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena in it. Ch being chased by paranormal activity? Yeah, why not? Crime. Why not? All Let's right, mash that, up the found that footage. Was, that was Rash Judgments. Uh, thank you, everybody. That was a oh, lot yeah, of informative Rash it. Judgments. Now, it. we've got a, a segment for you guys to watch yeah. that is really interesting because this is kind of a behind-the-scenes Hollywood kind of thing. Get uh, out. Yeah, no, well, because before a, a movie becomes a movie, before they shoot it, before they cast it, before they get the stars involved, it has to be what's called greenlit. So a writer has to go in and pitch a movie idea to an executive. And this is the process we're looking at. Although, the thing that's interesting is, in the recent years, and as the years go on in Hollywood, the executives seem to get younger and younger, well, and yeah. seem to be a little bit less informed about the history of cinema and uh, you know what's going on in the world. So yeah. that can be kind of a hindrance yeah, to the pitch process. Yeah. But uh, let's just, let's take a look. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. You can go in. Thanks. I'm sorry? Sit down. Thanks for the meeting. What do you got for me? <laughs> well, it's, it's very, very exciting. It's, uh, this is a drama that is not just going to move people to tears, but it will change lives. Has it been done before? What? Is it a remake? Oh, no. No. Pass! Oh. What else you got? Y you mean a remake? Are you screenwriter or not? <laughs> okay. How about Silkwood? What's that? It's about a woman who stands up for workers in a nuclear plant. Are there dinosaurs? No. I love dinosaurs! Silkwood is a true story. Dinosaurs are true. Okay. I'll give you a green light. <laughs> Silkwood with dinosaurs, okay. I have no pride. Wait, is there a kissing in the movie? Well, yeah. Everyone who kisses gets eaten by dinosaurs. Now go. Ew. 
18. Gimme Weinstein! I don't care which one! Well, that was uh, really uh, I've, informative. I've never, I've, I've been in the business yeah. for I don't know how many years. I didn't know pitch meetings happened. Yeah. I had no yeah. idea they were like that. It's a side of the business people normally don't see. I, that was very yeah. informative. Amazing, right? And I think he had a little Botox, but. Well, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, worked yeah, out. Yeah, I made a little worked out around the eyes, I think, yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's our show. And before we go, we'd like to do a small segment to wrap things up that we call, hey, what's your favorite? Now, th and that's where the logo will come up. Oh, it's yeah. right down there. And th this episode, I'm asking, what's your favorite revenge movie? Mmm. Todd? All right. This is hard. Right. But I decided ultimately to go with the classic Death Wish. Oh, with Charles nice. Bronson. Despite the fact that I get so icky and uncomfortable during the horribly exploitative rape yeah. scene, Ooh. which is the catalyst oh, yeah. for the vigilante yeah. revenge. It's so exploitative it's really and bad. kind of yeah. awful and just makes you feel awful watching it. Not like, not like it's, it's revoltingly well done. Yeah. It's, it's just exploitative and creepy and Jeff Goldblum's like yeah. running but, around. But, and, but on the upside, on the upside, Jeff Goldblum does get shot in the face. That is true. Oh, I like Jeffy Jeff. <laughs> um, I like Fly. But I here's the guy. What, here, I love Jeff Goldblum too. But here's what I but love. But in Death Wish, he really deserves to get shot yeah, in the face. Yeah, he does. Oh, he does. Yeah. Okay. But here's what I love about that movie is unlike most revenge movies where like Taken, mm -hmm. and I like Taken too. Uh, I like Taken. I haven't seen Taken too. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the, it's always like a special ops guy or a guy who's got a military history right. who gets mm -hmm. revenge. This is a movie about. Who's usually uh, been in retirement uh, yeah, for a while. This is yeah. a movie about a, a pacifist architect. Oh. Who decides, you know what? I've had it. I'm going to figure out how to shoot a gun. Yeah. And I love that conceit and that concept. That is a good conceit. But if I had to pick a special ops guy, I would go with Tom Jane's The Punisher. So you're going with Tom Jane Punisher well, for Well, my favorite uh, is revenge. Death Wish, but, right. but if yeah. I had to pick a special ops nice. revenge nice. guy, it would be Tom Jane's okay. Punisher character. Well, we also have our pig in the city, Stephen Falk, has a favorite revenge picture as well, which I think is a nice counterpoint to your choices. Oh, okay. So uh, let's see what his is. I love his opinion. I'm going to say my favorite revenge movie is Swimming with Sharks with Frank Whaley and Kevin Spacey. Uh, it's a little indie movie and it's a really dark and it's about revenge about uh, for a mean boss. And uh, Kevin Spacey's a mean boss and he's fucking terrible. And I really liked it. it. It got dark at points, maybe a little too dark, but I enjoy that movie. Swimming with Sharks, see it. So, yeah, it's, That's yeah, it's a different, good right? call. Swimming with yeah. Sharks is a great Excellent. movie. Excellent. It's a great movie. Good stuff. Now, Dre, do you have a favorite revenge picture? Yeah, I actually, uh, there were two, but I whittled it down to one. So uh, the two were No Mercy and The Professional, but The Professional Ooh. is the one that won. Oh, The Professional. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause, yeah, yeah. That's my yeah, fave. I, yeah. You know, I thought it was just a sweet, <laughs> Right. If I could say that. Sweet movie about the hey, little, man, help a little girl orphan girl yeah. and the yeah, hitman. And it yeah. was almost like an orphan Annie type. <laughs> With guns. With, yeah, without yeah, the right, musical. Let's do the exchange. Let's do the exchange. You be Gary Oldman. Or I'll be a Gary Oldman. Okay, because oh, you don't know what, what, what I'm referencing. Oh, no, are you talking about the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Here, you're ready. No, ready. Who should we get? No, he's going to get everyone. Oh, give me everyone. Oh, yeah. What? Everyone! It's awesome. <laughs> it's it. the best thing ever. I love it. Best thing so ever. So that's my fave. That's good. I like, I that, like that That's great. My, uh, my favorite revenge picture is uh, the Limey. Uh, the Soderbergh, Soderberg. the Terrence Stamp uh, tour de force. Uh, Brilliant cameo by Nikki Cat. Yes, and it has a Nikki Cat. Where is Nikki Cat? Where is Nikki Cat? Someone find Nikki Cat. These are questions we must have the answers well, to. Maybe, maybe Nikki Cat. Maybe Nikki's watching. I hope. If you're watching, Nikki, you can come on the yeah, show. Yeah, come on, be on our show. Why not? All right, that's uh, that's your what's your favorite revenge show? This uh, is the Film Pigs. This is our show. Thank you to Todd Anderson. Thank you to Dre for uh, filling in for our missing pig in the city, Stephen Falk. Oink oink. I'm uh, your host, Steve Skelton, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, bye bye. 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 Enjoy your popcorn. <laughs> Have fun storming the castle. Ah. Did you hear Mark Maron lost his cat, Boomer? What? It's really sad. When? I don't know, like a few weeks ago. Are you guys being serious? It's on his podcast, yeah. He, he has his cat who always meows on the... Oh, that's sad. And now he can't find him.
maybe he ran away. We should all go out looking for Boomer. You gotta treat Boomer right. Yeah, yeah let's have a couple more scotches Boomer first. 15%.